Thanks for joining me in the garage again. Uh, I don't know how long ago. It's been a while, maybe a couple years. I changed bearings in a uh, car hauler hub or a car tote or whatever you want to call it. And I had mentioned in the video about if you weld around the inner race, they make them way easier to pound out. And when I did that video, my welder was broken. So I was able to get a hold of a very large hub that I can show easier. And here we go. This whole welding situation right here is going to take about 45 seconds. So just zone out during this or you know, flip over to somebody else's video. If you enjoy horrible camera angles and bad editing, this is the channel you want to watch. Cause I, I got all of that. Yeah, any minute here. Maybe. Uh, there we go. I don't, don't exactly know what I'm doing there. Looking at it. Now you'll notice, like the first two hits, I miss. Actually, one of them hits my hand fairly hard. That one right there. I, I was drinking a little bit that day. That's, and it only actually took two hits to get that race to pop out. There you go. Hot, too. Ouch. Burn. What I'm showing you here is, um, on a tapered race, most hub bearing, uh, every hub bearing I've ever seen, big, smaller, and different, is a tapered race, a big side and little side, thick side and thin side. There you go, right there. You want to concentrate your weld on the thick side, not the thin side. And that's, I think that's what I'm explaining here. And then I'll show you here in a second where uh, if you look real close, right there, my finger's on it, right there. I damn near welded that bearing race to the hub. You gotta want to avoid that. That's counterproductive. Now here I'm showing you, you know how why this works. Why when you weld around something it shrinks. When your weld coals it shrinks. Here, look, it's perfectly square. Somewhat close enough. Now I think I'm looking through the phone to see if you guys can see this, which you really can't see it that well, and I don't care because I'm not moving shit around. Now, if you, when you weld like a T-joint like this, if you pay close attention, you'll notice that as you're welding, your plate will push away from the weld. And, uh, you know, heat expands things, so it's going to push away. But once your puddle behind you starts to cool down, it'll slowly start to work its way back the opposite direction. A weld, always, or your material will always pull towards your weld. And here I'm showing you, you know, the gap. It was square. Now it's not. Yippee. And, uh, yeah, that's about it. Thanks for watching.